dawn on the shores of the Persian Gulf. And crab plovers, having fed on the edge of the sea, come back to their breeding grounds. It will soon be so hot that the sand will be painful to touch. Yet this is where the crab plovers choose the nest. Every other plover in the world lays its eggs in a simple scrape on the ground, but not these. They, in spite of their unsuitably long legs, have learned how to become burrowers. They've discovered that only a few inches below the surface, the sand is wonderfully cool. There, a bird can sit on its eggs in comfort throughout the crushing heat of the day. To feed, the plovers have to go down to the edge of the sea. There, they can keep cool by bathing. The African Rift Valley offers no such relief. This steaming hot water comes from volcanic springs and is so loaded with soda that around the margins of the lake it solidifies into white curds. Yet flamingos come here in thousands. The attraction? The salty, tepid water is full of algae and small crustaceans, which the birds can collect using their specialized beaks like filter pumps. The fact that so few creatures can tolerate these conditions means that any animal that can has the place to itself and so can proliferate in vast numbers. That applies to the crustaceans and the algae in the water and also to the birds that feed on them. For the birds, there is an additional attraction. The soda-rich waters are so caustic that hunters such as hyenas, lions or smaller cats won't wade through them. So the centre of the lake is one of the safest places for a nest. The flamingos pile the mud into mounds, just high enough to be clear of any salt spray blown by the wind. That, if it caked the eggs, would kill them. But the heat is so extreme, the congealed soda so caustic, that sometimes a whole generation is lost. Nonetheless, the success rate is still sufficient to maintain the size of the flocks. <laughs> 